Here's a spicy take. SQLite might be the best database choice for your next SaaS project. Yes, really the same database that powers your browser history could handle your production workload better than the over-engineered Postgres cluster you're thinking about. Before you close this video in disgust, hear me out. I have watched countless developers dismiss SQLite as a toy database, while simultaneously struggling with connection pools, replication lag, and $500 a month database bills. Meanwhile, companies like Expensify are processing $10 billion in transactions on SQLite. The problem is on SQLite. The problem is that we have been thinking about it completely wrong. The light problem. Let's address the elephant in the room. The unfortunate light in the name is like naming a sports car Slow McLaren. Technically, Accurate in some narrow sense, but completely misleading about its actual capabilities. SQLite isn't Postgres Lite or MySQL for beginners, it's a different beast entirely. While Postgres is built for client server architecture with network protocols and connection management, SQLite is an embedded database engine. It's not lighter because it does this, it's lighter because it doesn't need entire server process, network stack, and authentication system. Here's what SQLite actually is the most deployed database engine in the world. Billions of instances, battle tested in production by companies processing millions of requests, faster than client-server databases for many workloads, asset compliant with full transaction support, capable of handling databases up to 281 terabytes. But troll, let's keep calling it a toy because of that name. When SQLite absolutely crushes it, here's where conventional wisdom gets it backwards. SQLite isn't just good enough for certain use cases, it's actually the superior choice for many production scenarios. First, read heavy workloads. If your app is 95% reads like most SaaS apps, SQLite will embarrass your Postgres setup. No network round trips, no connection overhead, just direct disk reads with an intelligent page cache. I have seen query times drop from 50 milliseconds to 0.5 milliseconds just by switching from Postgres to SQLite. Second, single server deployments. Running everything on a beefy server, SQLite eliminates an entire class of problems. No connection pool exhaustion, no network latency, no split brain, scenarios, no replication lag, backups are literally just copying a file. Third, edge computing. Deploying to multiple regions, each edge location can have its own SQLite database. Cloudflare workers, Fly.io, and similar platforms make this trivial. Your users get sub 10 milliseconds response time, and you get a simple architecture. Fourth, embedded analytics. Need to crunch numbers on a user data, SQLite can handle complex analytical queries on gigabytes of data, window functions, CDEs, JSON operations, and it's all there. And it's fast because there is no network overhead. The real limitations, not what you think. Let's be honest about where SQLite struggles, because it's not where most people think. High write concurrency, but it's not that simple. SQLite uses a single write on model, one write at a time. But here's what the haters don't tell you. Since write ahead like logging, val mode was introduced, SQLite can handle concurrent readers while writing. No more blocking reads during writes. In val mode, writers don't block readers. Readers, readers don't block writers, multiple readers work simultaneously, write performance improved dramatically. With well enabled and proper configuration, I have seen SQLite handles 500 to over 1000 writes per second. On modern hardware, while serving thousands of concurrent reads, yes, Postgres can push higher numbers with multiple writers. But ask yourself, is your SaaS really doing more than 1000 writes per second? Spoiler, it's not. Multiple application servers need horizontal, horizontal at scaling across multiple servers hitting the same database, SQLite wasn't built for this. You will need Postgres or MySQL, though solutions like LiteFS and ArcuLite are changing this game. Complex access control. SQLite doesn't have users, roles, or role level security. Your application handles all authorization. This is actually fine for 99% of SaaS apps where you're checking permissions in code anyway. But here's what people get wrong. SQLite can't handle concurrent reads. Wrong. It handles unlimited concurrent current reads. SQLite doesn't support JSON. Wrong. Full JSON support since 2015. SQLite can do full text search. Wrong. FTS5 is excellent. SQLite database corrupt easily. Wrong. It's one of the most reliable storage formats ever created. The architecture that changes everything. Here's how to think about SQLite in production. Traditional architecture was app server going to network database server and disk. SQLite architecture is straight. App server going straight to disk. That's it. Your database queries are now function calls. Your connection is a file handle. Your backup system is cpdatabase.db backup.db. This simplicity isn't a limitation. 
its superpower. Every component you remove is one that can fail, can't be misconfigured, and doesn't need monitoring. The operations dream you didn't know you wanted. Let's talk about something that will make your DevOps theme weep with joy. SQLite operations. Backups is just a file. Your entire backup strategy, or get a fancy with point-in-time recovery using Lightstream. It streams every change to S3 automatically. That's it. No Postgres dump, no coordinating replicates, no worrying about backup consistency with Lightstream, you get continuous replication to S3 with point-in-time recovery. Set it up in 5 minutes and forget about it. Restoring even easier. Restore from yesterday or restore from S3 with Lightstream. Compare this to restoring a 50 GB Postgres database. I will like testing. Use real production data. Clone production for testing. Done. Full production data set. Zero config. No sanitizing connection strings. No managing test database servers. No explaining to finance why you need another RDS instance for staging. Monitoring what monitoring, no connection pool metrics, no replication lag, no long running query alerts, no vacuum schedules, no disk space alerts, just application metrics that actually matter, real production patterns. Pattern 1. Write through cache. Instead of complex Redis plus Postgres setup, SQLite is your cache with 0 milliseconds latency. Pattern 2. Per tenant databases. Each customer gets their own SQLite database. Perfect isolation, easy backups, simple compliance. Pattern 3. Hybrid architecture. SQLite for reads, Postgres for writes. A stream changes from, from Postgres to SQLite replicates. 99% of queries hit SQLite, 1% hit Postgres. The money shot. When to use SQLite? Use SQLite when you read heavy, 90% reads. You can fit on one server, up to 100 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte storage is a chip now. You value simplicity and reliability. You want to minimize operational overhead. You're building embedded or edge applications. You need consistent sub millisecond query times. Don't use SQLite when you need high write concurrency. You require multiple writers from different servers. You need built in replication. You need database level access control. The plot twist nobody talks about. Here's the dirty secret. Most startups using Postgres would be better off with SQLite. They are paying for distributed system complexity they don't need while getting worse performance than a simple SQLite setup would provide. I have migrated several production systems from Postgres to SQLite. Results 10x faster queries, no network hop, 90% reduction in operational complexity, $500 a month saved on managed database costs, backup or restore times dropped from hours to seconds zero downtime from connection pool issues. Stop thinking client server. The biggest mental shift is this. Stop thinking of SQLite as a database server. It's library that happens to implement a SQL database once you internalize this. Everything clicks. You wouldn't spin up a separate server for your JSON parser. You wouldn't so create a connection pool for your regex engine. So why do it for your database when SQLite can handle your workload as a library? The future is already here. Major platforms are betting big on SQLite. Cloudflare's durable objects use SQLite. Fly.io, LiteFS enables distributed SQLite. Torso is building a distributed SQLite platform. Even Rails is pushing SQLite as a production default. These aren't totally projects. They are production infrastructure serving billions of requests. Your move, before you default to Postgres for your next project, ask yourself, will you really have over a thousand sustained writes per second? Do you actually need multiple application servers writing to the same database? Is the operational complexity worth it for your use case? If you answered no to any of this, give SQLite a serious look not as a stepping stone to a real database but as your production database. The light in SQLite doesn't mean it's less capable, it means it carries less baggage and in production less baggage means more speed, more reliability and more sleep. Stop overthinking it, start with SQLite, you can always add complexity later. If you actually need it, chances are you won't.